Hey, this is Math 2, Unit 10, 10, Worksheet Number 2, looking at what's called Vertex Form today. So before, again, our last lesson, we were looking a little bit at what we called Standard Form. And Standard Form is AX squared plus BX plus C. And so now we're looking at what's called Vertex Form. And this form, what's nice about it is by looking at it, you can instantly tell where the vertex is going to be. And that's because of the values that are provided here. A couple things we want to just have in our notes from your, from your lesson today. This A value is going to tell you if it's positive, we're going to be going up, right? If it's negative, we're going to be curving down. And the value of that number for the A value is going to tell you how wide it might be or how narrow it might be, wide or skinny. So a whole number, like a number like uh, like four, would be more narrow, but a fractional value would be um, wider. All right. Okay. So that's just kind of the notes for the A. Looking at the A part there, the B part is going to tell you, in our case here, the the horizontal. Uh, sorry, the, the, <laughs> said B. Uh, the H value, sorry, is going to be a horizontal shift right whether that's going to be positive or negative if it's a positive value it's going to shift to the right if it's a negative it's going to shift to the left but remember the key thing with the h value is we don't worry about this part we don't worry about that minus h that's irrelevant to us it's what the actual h is going to be okay so you have to kind of think the op or think opposite so to speak and that k value here the last one there is going to be the vertical shift how much it goes up or down. Again, if it's positive, it's going to go up. If it's negative, it's going to go down. So that's your basics for what we're looking at today. So looking at number one, we'll start here. We have to sketch the graph of each function, find the vertex, domain range, width, where the axis of symmetry is. That means like at which point does it go whoop, flip around and what the max and minimum of the function is going to be. All right. So the vertex, this is in vertex form. So I'm going to take this number here and in a sense, just take the opposite. So if that's a positive two, my x value will be negative two, and my y value is over here at the k, that's gonna be negative one. So that's my vertex. It's nice when it's in vertex form, you can tell right away. The domain, looking at this, because it's a regular looking quadratic, is gonna be all values of x, so we can write it like that. And for the range, we look at the vertex for the range, and because this is a positive here, we know we're curving up, so y is going to be greater than or equal to negative 1. I have here a whole number. And the whole number there is, is 2. And so because it's a, a, a whole number, not a fraction, I would say this is going to be narrow, right? Because that's just, it's not, you know, 1, is, one would be normal, a fraction is going to be wide, and narrow or skinny is going to be that whole number. The axis of symmetry we find by looking at the x value right here. So where is that going to be at? The axis of symmetry is going to be when x equals negative 2. That's where it's going to make this little curve or bend. And the minimum value of the function, or the smallest that it can be, is going to be negative 1. Again, we also get that from the vertex point right there. So if I was to graph this out and, and plot some points there, um, which you can do, you can make a little table here. You can say x, you can say y, and we could do a negative one. You could do a zero and a one and plot some points. Let's go on those lines. So when x is equal to zero, let's do this one first. When x is zero, you have zero plus two is two, two squared is four, four times two, so sorry, zero, yeah, zero, two, four, and then four times two is eight, eight minus one is seven. So when you're at zero, we're at seven, right? So we're gonna be at a weird spot. So zero is up here at seven, so way up here. So if I was to plot like last time, I go, huh, that's kind of weird. That's just not gonna work too well. So not a good idea in this point to do a negative one and zero comma one, right? Because why? I'm not gonna reflect around the zero point because of all this extra stuff. So what would be a better choice? Well, a better choice would be to do an X and Y table and take a look at the axis of symmetry. And let's make that my middle point, negative two. And let's do a negative one and a negative three. Why there? Because everything's gonna flip at that point. 
at negative two, my vertex, I'm at negative one. So I could plot that negative two comma negative one. I know that that's my point. I know that it's positive, so this is gonna be curving this direction. And I know it's gonna be narrow because of the number there. So I end up with something that looks something along these lines. So I'm better off plotting negative one and negative three if I wanna put another point in there. So let's do it real quick. I'm gonna use the negative one because it's smaller. So negative one um, plus two is a positive one. One squared is one. One times two is two and two minus one is one. So we're gonna have at negative one, we are at positive one, which means at negative three, we're also at positive one. So I can use my t-chart there, and now I have a couple points I can graph, and we're good to go. And if I think about this, looking back to where we started, zero is gonna be at seven. Yep, we're on our way up to seven, something along those lines right there. So it's probably a little better and faster if you plot your vertex, look at your axis of symmetry to figure out where you want to like um, put your t-chart and pick a value of x one greater and one less to figure out how that's going to kind of spread out there all right let's take a look at number three all right number three here we have a negative value telling me it's going to be curving down we have a two which tells me it's going to be narrow or skinny all right all right, we know that, so let's just see what we have. Vertex form is the opposite of that, so the x value is gonna be positive four, and the y value is there at positive five. And that's my vertex, and I can plot that right away. One, two, three, four, and up one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so at the very, very top right there is my first point. And again, we know we're gonna be curving down, and it's gonna be narrow. My domain for x values, because it's just gonna keep going like this forever, is gonna be all values of x, the range is gonna be everything, in this case, less than or equal to what? Five, right? It's gonna be everything going this way. It's gonna work for our y value. Because I have a whole number there, this is again will be narrow. My axis of symmetry comes off the vertex. That would be when x equals four, all right? And my minimum value of the function, or sorry, my maximum, because it has a maximum, because it has a maximum, the high point is going to be 5. Now, if I want to plot this out again using the x and y, if I'm not sure, I can do three values. I'm going to use my vertex at 4, 5 as my one point, and I'll pick a value below it and a value above it. But I don't have to do that because it's going to reflect. So I can do 3, for example. So let's do 3. Uh, actually, let's do 5. Why 5? Because it's just nicer to do 5 minus 4. So I'm going to do 5. So 5 minus four is one, one squared is one, one times negative two is negative two, and negative two plus five is gonna be three. So I have three, and I have three. So we go down five, four, three, and we're gonna put a point there, and a point there, and now I have a couple points, and that's about what it looks like. Okay, and that's the idea for that one. All right, let's flip it over to the next side. Number five, all right, number five. Number five is kind of fun because why? We don't have a number in the front and so you're probably stressing out a little bit. Like, where's the A? That's okay, there's always a one right there, right? So we have an A value, the A happens to be a negative one, no problem. So does it have a maximum or a minimum? Looking at the fact that it's a negative, a negative value tells me the curve is gonna go this way. And so when it curves that way, I'm gonna have a maximum. <coughs> all right the next thing we have to look at we can find our vertex our vertex is going to be at the opposite of that three comma four that's our vertex <coughs> excuse me so here's three and then four is going to be here at that point and we know we're curving down okay not to worry about what this looks like for now just kind of a sketch it says sketch so the graph is increasing so when is it increasing when is it going to be getting larger Okay, so it's increasing for all values uh, on this side. Everything over here for x is gonna be going up, thinking about this way. 
Every value of x I have, I know my arrow goes that way. We're gonna be going up, 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 up until we get here. So I know my arrow goes down, but for all my values of x, I'm increasing, increasing, increasing. For everything when x is less than three, I'm getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? It's curving up, 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 it's increasing. Now when I get to three, I'm gonna to start to go down. So everything greater than three is gonna be decreasing. See how that works? I'm increasing as I'm less than three, but once I get to three here, I start to decrease. And that's what's happening there, okay? Let's take a look at this one, number six, real quick. Again, vertex form tells me opposite five comma negative three. That's my vertex is gonna be. It's positive here, so I know I'm curving up. So I can put a point real quick, sketching five, and then one, two, three, put a point there, and I know I'm gonna be curving up like this in terms of what it looks like. So does it have a max or a minimum? We would say it's a minimum. Now looking here, what's happening? I'm gonna be decreasing as I get closer to five, right? So uh, I'm decreasing when x is less than five, or sorry, less than, yeah, less than five. Yep, I'm good there. Um, yeah, less than five. And then I'm increasing when it is greater than five. All right, does that make sense? So we're decreasing, decreasing. Once we get here, now we start to increase, increase. Okay, so I know we tend to draw the arrows going the same direction, but that's probably more realistic. It's coming from here, going that way. That's the idea. All right, let's pop down and skip seven and eight. I'm gonna pop down here to number nine. Number nine, so determine if each ordered pair is a solution. That means that when you plug the X in, the Y is what you end up with, right? So. I have x squared plus three, so this would be four squared plus three. Four squared is eight, and then, oh sorry, 16. <laughs> 16 plus three is 19. Is it equal 19? Yes, we're good to go. This next one I have negative two squared. Well, negative two squared plus three. Negative two squared is four, so that becomes four plus three, and four plus three is, like this right here? Four plus three, negative two squared is four, plus three is seven. We would say, nope, that's not working there. Okay, this next one, negative six. Negative six times negative six is gonna be 36, plus three is 39, that will work. And this one here, we have five squared plus three, that's gonna be 25, is five squared, plus three is 28, and that would be a no value right there. Okay, so we have a couple yeses, a couple noes, and that's what I have on that one. Turn in the page to the next side. Number 11, graph the functions f of x equals x squared and g of x equals this stuff there. All right, if x, f of x is mapped on a g of x, what is a transformation? And we haven't really talked much about this transformation since really math eight. All right, so here we go. So if I graph this one, x squared, for example, x squared is here, right? That's x squared is gonna be just simply at zero comma zero is the vertex. And when x is one, y is one, right? We can do a different color if it helps you out. So we could do zero, zero, one, one. When x is two, y is four, right? And so we have this for the first one. So that's my f of x is in this color right there. If I was to do the um, x minus two squared plus three, I have a vertex is the opposite. So two comma three is my vertex. So here's two and then one, two, three. My vertex is right there for that g of x function. Okay, so that's where that's gonna be located at. So now if I was to plot a point, for example, I don't need to, but I could. Um, you know, again, it's just graphing, sketching that. If I was to pick a point, I could pick something like a three, right, it's next to it. If I put three in here, three minus two is one, right? So three minus two squared plus three, that's one squared plus three, one squared is one plus three is four. So I could make a t-chart x, y, and we could say when x is three, y is four. So three, and we put a four there, which means it reflects there, axis of symmetry, 
And so the graph for this one looks like that. Okay, so those are my two graphs for g of x and f of x. So we're gonna describe the transformation. So what's happening here between, to go from f to g. So here's how you write that. The x and y, the transformation is doing this. The x value, here's x, is moving from here, one, two, over. So we're moving two there, which you can see from that vertex. The y value, uh, sorry, do this, well, x plus two, right this way. To move from f of x, which is x and y, the g of x becomes x plus two, and the y is y plus one, two, three. y plus three. And so if we describe that as a shift, that is gonna be, it's going right two and up three. And you get that from that point right there. So this is our g of x right if it's mapped onto it how do you go from there to, how do you go from f of x to g of x you take whatever f is and you add two to the x value and three to the y value and that's your basic idea right there let's do one more of these i'm going to do number 13 okay and so again we're going to look at if we graph out the x uh, f of x equals negative x squared okay so that's gonna be located here at zero, zero for the first one. If I put a one in there, one squared is one, but it's negative, so you end up with a positive, no, you have a negative one. So we're gonna go negative one there, no problem. And so we're gonna go one and one, and this just continues on. So our initial curve looks something like this, no problem. We take a look at the g of x one here, Again, it's a negative value, so we're gonna have a shift. My vertex is the opposite, negative three comma negative one. So we're gonna go one, two, three, and negative one there, All right? No problem. So we know we're gonna have this curve look something like this. That's what that one looks like. I don't really need to plot the points for this activity. That's what it looks like, okay? If I graph that out there. So what's happening to go from f of x to g of x. That's what the mapping means. So if f of x is x comma y, what happens to the g of x part? What's that do to the x value? Well, the x value is moving from zero to one, two, three over. So it's x minus three. And the y value is moving from zero down one. So it's y minus one. If we describe that transformation shift, this is gonna be left three, down one. All right. And that is it for today's lesson. Hope it helps you out. We'll see you next time.